How's it going everyone? It's John again. Um, sorry for the kind of lack of posting. Um, I've been kind of busy with doing a project now, but what I thought I would do would be to fill the gap at least a little bit. Would be to do a short video on Ansible backups. Now this is quite a, well it's a really simple video actually, but I think if you're new to automation it can be quite helpful. And to be honest it's just quite helpful generally because, well I'll describe what the actual playbook does. So what we've got here is we've got a basic network. Now let's say you are the administrator of this network. Right now, um, we've got seven nodes. Obviously this could be expanded to encompass hundreds or thousands of nodes. And the nodes we've got here are London, Amsterdam, Paris, Madrid, Berlin, Rome, and Vienna. The basic setup I've got here is an IP address and of just basic connectivity. Now ordinarily of course this would actually have public IP addressing but because I'm just um, doing a demonstration we've just got a simple IP address of like I think it's 192.168.2.1.2.2.3.13.2.4.1.4.2 so on and so forth just so they have basic reachability. But to make that a little bit easier for the video so that it's you know e you can easily follow what node corresponds to which IP address. I've also added lookback addresses and the format which they have is London's got 1.1.1.1, Amsterdam's got 2.2.2.2, Paris has got 3.3.3.3 so on so forth right through to Vienna which has got 7.7.7.7 .7 .7 .7. so um, that should keep that quite simple. Now what I'm going to do here is, well do you know what, let me explain what the, the playbook does. So Ansible has these built-in modules and the built-in module which I'm going to use is the iOS config. Um, in fact, you know what, let me just show you the the big complex uh, playbook. Um, that's it. That's as simple as it is. Now what I've got here is the name, give it a name, hosts. Now the hosts is basically what devices you're going to deploy this on. I've written all here because I'm going to do uh, deploy it on all. However, that will actually be defined in your Ansible host file. Now I'll get to that a wee bit later on. Um, but you can essentially pick certain nodes that you want, whatever. I'm going to do it in all for this video. Gather facts, no. Connection local, you can do it in local or you can do network CLI. Local just means that the, the script executes locally on my box and is pushed out to the, the nodes. Tasks, now this is what the actual playbook's going to do. The name, give it a name that you want. I've given it backup running config because obviously it's descriptive and it tells you what it's actually doing. It's backing up the running configuration file. Now here is these modules. iOS config, like I say, this is actually developed to run specifically on Cisco devices. And what we've got here is this backup module. Now it's effectively a boolean module, it either is yes or no. Are we going to back up or are we not going to back up? I've always set this to yes. So once I do this, what it's going to do here, like it says here, it's effectively going to back up. It's going to grab all the running configuration and it will write it to a backup folder in the playbook root directory or role root directory. Um, and like I said, here's a good part. If the directory does not exist, it is created, which means that you don't need to do anything. Just you run this playbook with the backup module. The backup module will go and grab all the running configuration, uh, running configurations of all the devices which you target. It's then going to create this backup folder, and within that backup folder, it's going to take the router name and append it to the time and the date and create a file with that router name, time and date. Within that file of that particular one, it's going to have each uh, router's running configuration. So that obviously makes it very, very easy to manage because if you ran this, imagine you ran this every single day for, I don't know, months, six months, and six months down the line, you suddenly have started seeing some... Um, uh, in fact, scrap that. Let's just say you run it every day and then one day the network seems to be acting really weird. You don't know what the hell's going on. All you need to do is, okay, well, say the network was running fine on, I don't know, the 5th of May 2019. You could go to your rollback. You can see that device, pull out 
that exact configuration for that exact date. And if you want to roll back and uh, say what was the actual configuration then, you can easily visually see it and roll back. So it's very, very good for general management. So with that said, let's kick on and start configuring this. What I'm actually going to do is show you how I set these things up. Because some folk have asked me in the comments, what do you actually do to even get Ansible working? So I'm going to quickly run through that again in case it wasn't clear in the other videos. So like I said, I've got these basic um, IP addresses configured, the loopbacks and general connectivity. However, if I pinged from 1.1.1 to 7, it would not actually work just now because I don't have a routing protocol. So what I'm going to do is just grab this, copy you, and I'm going to go to each node and just paste it in. So paste that in, that's going to put the routing protocol on it and the SSH. This is the old school way to automate your devices. <laughs> yeah, the old notebook and copy paste. So copy you in. Madrid. Mm. I'm lost that there. Do that again. Control. Right, a couple more to go. Okay, so now we've got our routing protocol up and our SSH up. So what I'm going to do is go over to the the control node, which is going to be my IPv0 Linux box. I'm going to give it an IP address of, well, the IP address of London's uh, LAN facing interface for me is 192.168.1.1. I'm going to give my box 192.168.1.2 and give it the default gateway of 1.1. So we'll do if config eth 0 192.168.1.2 netmask is a slash 24 and bring that up i'm going to do a root add the default gateway and give it the gateway which is 1.1 so now i should be able to ping the all the ones which i can i now should actually be able to ssh with john at vienna which is all the sevens Accept that, yes. Password is Cisco. And now we can get in. So that seems to be all good. So the next thing what I need to do is if I do an LS, you'll see I've got nothing here. Basic configuration. So what I need to do is effectively, because if I do, if I do right now ping London, doesn't know where London is. So what I need to do is effectively give it this kind of uh, name resolution. Think of this as like your own little DNS. So I will do a nano and you go into the Etsy folder and then hosts. Now what I'm going to do effectively is say for 1.1.1.1 resolve that to London, 2.2.2 resolve that to Amsterdam. Um, I've got three. So what this basically means is that if I type in ping London, it's going to look in this file and go, oh, London is 1.1.1.1, and then ping 1.1.1, and I just need to type ping London. Do you know what I mean? So it makes it easier. Do you need to do this? Not really. It's just it makes it simpler, and it makes it... Um, it's just it's easier, to, to be honest. I mean, setting up might be a little bit of a hassle, but once it's up, that's it there, and it just keeps things nice and neat. So I would advise doing it if you if you want. Um, Rome and 7.7.7 .7 and I'll do Vienna. So for control O and control X and now ping London, it's resolving it to 1.1.1.1 and if I ping, say, up, oh, ping Berlin, it's resolving that to all the fives. Do you see what I mean? So that makes it easier. Okay, so the next thing what we need to do is configure our Ansible file. Now, the Ansible file is here. Now these are effectively the defaults. Now the timeout is kind of high because I'm running this on GNS3. Anytime I'm working with virtualization or anything like that, I always make the timeouts higher because they've got a 
they've kind of got a habit of timing out on you and then it just breaks the, the script. So I make it a little bit higher. Ordinarily this might be 5 seconds, 10 seconds, but I've raised it and expanded it to B25. So maybe try that yourself if you find it easier if your scripts are failing on you. So we need to create this file called ansible.cfg. Okay, paste this in here, Control O, Control X. If we cat that now, we see we've got that there. The next thing we need to do is create a host file. The reason for that is if we actually look at the inventory, Ansible is default will look in a file called hosts. Now if I change that to say John, this file I'm creating now would have to be would have to be called John. But because the inventory is specifying hosts, I'm gonna create a file called hosts. So nano hosts. Now Ansible works by using these little square brackets. I I think I talked about this in a previous video, and it's a way to group together uh, devices which share kind of commonalities. Now, obviously, this is all my devices which I'm administering, so I'm going to use just Paris, um, Madrid, uh, what's the other one? Berlin, Rome, and Vienna, I think. Yep, that was it. So if I do Control O, Control X, actually. I'll cut that first. So you can see we've got this host file here. And if I actually wanted to, I could do um, nano ho hosts. And let's just say we've got main offices. We could make main and just say, I don't know, London and Amsterdam were the main offices. And you had smaller remote offices. And they were Paris and I don't know, say Vienna, whatever. That means if I look at this script again, because I'm saying hosts, Ansible's going to look at hosts in the host file and look for uh, the bracket of all. Now, the bracket of all is going to encompass all these routers, and my, my internal router will resolve London to 1.1.1.1, Vienna is 7.7.7.7. .7 .7 .7. If I change this host to main, it would just execute on London and Amsterdam. If I change this to remote, it would just execute on uh, Paris and Vienna. So that was the purpose of that. So, like I say, the the actual playbook is going to execute on all, and it's just going to run this basic backup of yes. So, if I exit out of this, ls clear... Now we actually need to make this um, playbook, so we can call it anything we want. I'm going to call this backup.yaml because I'm extremely creative. <laughs> um, and just grab this. Uh, control A, copy U, and just paste this in. So O. And you'll notice, like I say, there is no um, directory on my root directory called backup, there's no, there's nothing there. The actual script, or the actual playbook, should I call it, is going to create that for me. So, let's go and try this then. So all I need to do, um, oh, is do ansible playbook backup, give it a user, which is John, like I say, we made that because the SSH password, we're using the username of John, and like I said, the password is going to be Cisco. So I'm going to do user John, tag K, that's basically prompting for a password. So it's going to ask me for the password when I hit enter. Ask me for the password, Cisco, enter, and it's running the actual playbook. So that's it, there's the recap. All okay, nothing was unreachable or failed, everything worked. So if we now do ls, do it clear, ls, we've now got this file, this rather this directory called backup. And if we change directory into backup, and we've done ls again, you see we've now got all these files. And it's got, it's appended the name, Vienna, config. And it gives you the date, which is the 28th of April 2019, which I've got in the actual time which I have done this. So if you did this, like I say, sequentially or daily, whatever, you could quite easily 
eyeball say, mm, the network was fine working on the 21st of March, let's go and have a look at the 21st of March in Paris, and you could grab that. So in this case, I can just do cat Paris, and we've got all of the files. Now, obviously, I don't have much configurations on this. This could have loads and loads and pages worth of configuration, but for the purpose of the video, I kept it just a basic IP address. And if we cat uh, London on the 28th of uh, April, there's London's configurations. So you can see London's got the look back of all the ones. If we did LS, we cat Madrid. Madrid's obviously going to show a different look back. It's going to show the look back of all the fours. Um, cat Rome. So like I say, if I wanted to just, just before I finish up, um, I'll just do an RMR uh, backup. So I'll just remove that and I'll do an, what I'll do is I'll remove this as well. So mine I was saying about um, these hosts, or rather cat host, oh I didn't change it, I don't know. So if I do hosts, and I was saying I could have these different groups called main, and main would just execute on say London and I don't know Madrid we'll just call it and we'll do control O control X if we cat this now we've now got a group called all we've got a group called main so if I change this to just main okay and now we make a new one copy you clear and we'll call this playbook play to dot YAML. I'm just going to paste this in, so it's going to have just execute on main rather rather than them all. Control O, Control X, clear U, and we'll do Ansible, playbook, play to, and we'll still do the user join, prompt me for a password, Cisco. And it's just going to execute on just London and Madrid. So if I do an LS, do a CD into backup, LS just got London and Madrid. Cat Madrid, that's all Madrid's. So you can just change that as you please. So I think that'll be the end of the video. Like I say, it's a short one, a, a short one and a simple one because I've kind of been a bit busy recently so I've not had much time to do much more. But hopefully in the next two, three weeks I'll be freed up and I should get, what, posting it a little bit more frequently. So that's the end of the video. Um, thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.